On Morning in America, we love answering your questions. America, many of you have sent in questions on the security concerns for Supreme Court justices. We want to show you the scene on Thursday night. Protesters gathering in the neighborhood of Justice Amy Coney Barrett's home in Falls Church, Virginia. Uh, protests like these have been happening at several of the conservative justices' homes uh, since May when a leaked draft opinion signaled the nation's highest court was willing to overturn Roe v. Wade at the federal level. We know now that that has become a reality. Uh, we want to bring in former Secret Service agent Evie Pumperas. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. We know that there is this fine line between First Amendment rights to protest or picket and then, you know, violent, violently uh, being disorderly or perhaps uh, threatening someone. So how do uh, law enforcement officers actually decide we need to take actual action like they have in Maryland, where they are now uh, moving protesters or warning protesters who are picketing outside of justices' homes? Well, you should have a buffer and distance. You're not supposed to have them have free reign. So whenever we would put a security plan together for any protectee, one of the things we always kept in mind is protesters, because you're always going to have them. Where are you going to place them? Can you put them in a space where they are exercising their free speech so they have a right to be heard? but they should not be impeding security. They should not be in close proximity. You don't know who's in the crowd either, right? Who are these people? You don't know if anybody has any weapons, anybody has any ill intent. So you really should be putting a security plan together specifically for the protesters. And I'm finally glad that we're starting to see them think in this capacity. I think they've never had to do this before. And that's why we're seeing this kind of hinge, this lateness on their performance on putting something like this together. Let's get to our first viewer question. This is from Winston DuBose in Florida. Listen. Are the Supreme Court justices going to get any type of protection at their homes or if they're out in public? And I believe that, I mean, within the past several weeks, there was more security provided them as a result of, you know, just the fact that this opinion became an actual ruling. And then the fact that uh, outside of uh, Justice Kavanaugh's home, there was somebody who admitted he wanted to kill the justice. Yes, and thank you for your question, Winston. That's a great question. They are getting more security. And so what's happening now, we're seeing security in two ways. We're seeing security when they actually travel, which initially was a concern. What happens when they leave home, when they leave the area? Do they have protection? If they, What do you do when they go on vacation or if they go on business trips? So they are getting protection now or on the clock when they travel as well as when they are going to work and as well as at their homes. And they're probably also gonna see them setting up what we call command centers or command posts at their houses. So setting up some type of permanent security plan or system where you'll be checking people, maybe monitoring traffic coming down the road, who's coming down. So you're gonna see a true security plan even kind of become more amplified here because of what we're seeing. Let's listen to Winston's second question. Why does the President of the United States receive uh, Secret Service protection, and why don't the Supreme Court justices of the United States receive the same kind of protection? Interesting question. Mm -hmm. It would be very expensive. Yes, that's exactly where I was going to go. I was going to say, great question, Winston. Who's going to pay for this? If you're talking about protection, it is around the clock. It is multiple shifts. It is resources. Weapons, vehicles, ballistic vehicles, travel, hotels, airfare. It is all sorts of, it is just the finances that come with that, that the taxpayer is going to take that burden. And the president of the United States is one person. These are nine justices around the clock. And then where does that protection stop, right? What about their wives or their spouses, their children? Where, where does that extension go? So you're talking about millions upon millions upon millions of dollars per year, putting that in budget. And that's where Congress really comes in and ultimately decides how much are we willing to give? How long are we going to do this protection? Yeah, and it, and it really is interesting because you have people on every side of this uh, particular situation where they're watching it play out on TV and they are outraged that this uh, decision, this ruling came down about Roe v. Wade. But I don't think anybody wants to see someone die at the hands of someone who would have ill intent. Uh, and obviously everybody should have the liberty to go home safely to their families. Um, Evie, thank you very much for joining us. And thanks to our viewer, Winston, for asking the questions. You can send us your questions at newsnationnow.com slash answers for America, and we'll answer your questions live on the show.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.